260 years of history exist between these two schools combined. Paul Jim was established in 1858 and Uppies are celebrating their 99th year. This afternoon, both sides enter this match unbeaten in the early stages of their 2019 seasons. Uppies are the kings of school rugby in the north. Paul Jim are one of the giants of Cape Wine Winelands rugby. And up next is a match two of the super quick Premier Interschool Series of 2019. We're looking at the Afi Springboks. They've produced 10 so far. You'll notice Farida Priya, Vaynant Ulafia, Pia Spies, and Dean Kraling, all part of that triumphant bull side, which won three Super Rugby titles and a couple of Curry Cups in between as well. Never mind a 2007 Rugby World Cup. Jahan van Gaan, also an old Afi, and he was part of the coaching staff on that day, now coaching at Munster. You'll see the Paul Jim list of Springboks is considerably longer. 24 Springboks, the latest of whom is Louis Schroeder. Andre Pollard is a hero around these parts. He played three years of under 20 rugby. One of those years, he was still a Paul Jim boy while he was playing for the under 20 box. And of course, they won that tournament here in South Africa. But plenty of spring box for them to enjoy here at Paul Jim, where the rugby tradition is so strong. And here is the Uffies starting lineup. They have one player returning from Craven Week, unfortunately, Christian Kampfer has dropped out of the starting lineup shortly before the match. Adolf Fisser and Dieter Kreffert, who's in the 15 jersey, played the Blue Bulls 15 at Craven Week, which is essentially Blue Bulls B. And the hooker, Jacques-Louis de Toy, played in the number two position for the Academy Week for the Bulls. Paul Jim have a number of returning players this year, and they might just be believing that this is their year to be one of the best teams in the country. Stravino Jacobs and Bobby Alexander played Craven Week, and Ethan James, Bradley Davids, and Eric Basson all involved in Grand Coma Week, some of them on the bench. Pierre Siebert played Grand Coma in 2017, but was injured at the most recent province trials and did not make any of the Craven Week sides as a result. Here are the Paul Jim boys in the stands. And of course the girls as well who will be streaming in. This is a co-ed school. They have very few players to choose from as compared to some of their other competitors in the Winelands region and around the country, namely so Gray College of Bloemfontein, Paul Rose of Stellenbosch, Paul Boys who stay just down the road. But Paul Jim make it happen every year in spite of those restricted numbers. And here come the boys. They're going to be welcoming their charges onto the field. Athies are getting ready to make their way onto the Paul Jim field. Two unbeaten sides. They've played six and seven matches. Watch out, young man. <laughs> well, with a sidestep like that, he might be running onto the field in years to come. But here come Athies on to the young Creel field of Paul Jim. It's Athies guts against Chami guts today. Both schools employing the same motto, guts and glory call themselves the footballer and they are a ferocious side fearsome fearsome team it's George Oosthuizen in the eight jersey he's going to have to have a big impact apparently Juan Wilson Peter Siebert and Lonel for Paul Jim their loose trio is firing on all cylinders this year and here come Paul Jim led out by Marco van Rijn What a wonderful welcome. There is their proud captain, Marco van Rijn. He will have to lead these charges well. Watch out for Stravino Jacobs on the wing. He excelled for Paul Jim last year, played at Craven Week as well, of course. There we go. The boys pulling together as a team. This is the super quick Premier Interschool Series. This is match number two. We've got some other big games coming for you this season, 12 of them to be exact. They'll be coming weekend after weekend, only cranking in intensity and importance as the schoolboy season continues and draws to a culmination with all of the derbies towards the end of the year, including, of course, the biggest schoolboy match in the world, Paul Jim against Paul Boys. Alongside me in commentary day today, it's Martin Mklongo. Martin, I almost didn't get the time to introduce you. You're looking forward to this one. Paul, lovely to be out here in the pole. Great weather, not too windy. Looking forward to some dynamite rugby. Dynamite is what we should expect. What a hit that is on Reinhard Ludwig. It's come out on the side of Paul German. It's Jacobs immediately attacking the Uffies line. What a start for the home team. 
it's their captain. Get the end, pardon me, it's not. It's Reynard Kroos, his locking partner, Bobby Alexander. Impressive number nine, this young man is. Another with provincial colours through the hands of Small. Charged up on the outside is Johan de Toy. Spot tackle is superb from the Yuffies boy. Last of the Peter Siebert. Gerard van Nieke. Van Nieke approaching the five meter line for Jim. Afis are in over the top of that ball. And yes, the whistle does blow. Penalty to Paul Jim. Number six. Paul coming out firing on the home grounds. Forcing Afis to defend on and on. A great synergy shown between the forward pack and the back line. Right on the ball. Going for posts in breezy conditions, although this is about as easy a kick as you could hope for. Dead center in front of the post, but that wind will be blowing into the right-hand side of his face. So it is blowing slightly in favor of Afis. It'll be interesting to see how they use that wind in their favor with kicking out of hand. And also, of course, Paul Jim should have it in their favor in the second half. Also, a chance that rain may fall at any point during this match. Many things to consider. But here for the first points of the match, Jan Small. Pardon me, it's Tian Swanapul for Paul Jim. from Swanepoel, he played first team last year and he's back again, three points to know. Be happy to open the scoring, will Swanepoel, can Paul Jim hold on here? Afis get their first chance to get some territory into the Paul Jim side of things. Well received. It's Marku van Rijn, their captain who got up high. Afis are contesting at this rack. Bobby Alexander over the top. What a chase that is. Well taken on the left wing and powerful play from George Oosthuizen for Afis. Van Asbjergen. First chance with ball in hand. For the footballer, Ruben Wendel now with some scrappy ball, making it good. Van Asbjergen charging runs at all times from Afis. That's Jansen van Rensburg out from Porchiter and now into the hands of Dutoy. Does Dutoy keep control? Yes, he does. And off to Gerard Porte. Afis are making ground now, but over the ball there was Ethan James. Van Asbjergen oh, sandwiched. By some Khami defenders. What a clear out that is from Jacques Louis de Toy. And he's carried on the momentum forward for Afis. Van Asbjergen, he looks blind and he goes blind. And it's Billy Borkhieter. Borkhieter for the line! Borkhieter scores! Afis boys coming out just showing their physicality. Great clean out that came out through from Jacques Louis de Toy. 98 kg. You saw that big clean-out coming through with a try, great strides. Dummy ball given to us by Valipot Kiter, the young man that played Grand Combo for last year, scoring that try for Afis. Well, Stravino Jacobs was in trouble. He was asking for somebody to come and cover, particularly Jovan Becker. He did not make it. Jacobs was never going to be able to stop the momentum of the barnstorming Valipot Kiter after that. These two loose trios are going to be going at it and these are two of the strengths of these two sides. Now going for posts, Dieter Krafford. Well, the ball being blown over, that just goes to show just how breezy it is. It doesn't appear to be blowing the flags too hard, but it is a good, strong, steady breeze. And I can tell you that because it is blowing straight into my face. Uffie's boys and Paul Jim boys wear very similar colored uniforms. Let's go to drop Well, now there's trouble. He needed to play it. Now he's got to drop it. Here it comes. Bit of bend. Not a bad effort, but that's going wide. Dieter Krafford misses the conversion, unfortunately, very much due to the breeze blowing the ball over. Great ball took by Valipot Hitter. 
with a show and go. Damien Christian Detroit to take that try himself. Up it goes from Tian Swanapul. This one falls in the 22 for Afis. It is John, it is George Orstazen rather. Takes it in. Here's Crefford. Good clearing kick to touch. Paul John line out on the 10 meter line of Afis. Appears to be taking the kicking responsibilities. FC Potchita, who's in the fly off position, was a late change to the Afis side. Perhaps that's the reason why. Compion feeds straight to the front of the line out, wisely so, from Paul Jim securing their own ball. Bobby Alexander trying to take up as much time on the ground as possible. Hands on the ball from Afis, but the man had lost his feet. Strong run from Juan Wilson. So important that this Paul Jim trio, loose trio, dominates. If they want to dominate this match, and that's Gerard van Nieke, Bobby Alexander, Johan Smal, the skip ball out to Pierre Siebert. And now it's Stefan de Toy working his way towards the ground. Constantly trying to steal ball, our Afis. Positive at the breakdown. Bobby Alexander, quick ball. What does this hold for? The Khamis as they send it wider. Low null in the midfield. Bobby Alexander. Smal. Small this time takes it to the line himself. Man over the ball for Afi. He's not happy as Adolf Fisser, one of the provincial representatives for the big brother. Leave it, leave it. Paul Jim retaining possession admirably. Bobby Alexander to Juan Wilson. Advantage coming the way of the home team. Alexander, quick ball for Paul Jim. This is going to start becoming a problem for Afis if they allow them to run all day. What a break that is from Cohen Hatsta. Loss of control, side. and we'll go back for the penalty. Sorry, 12. Ball from Nazim just working that ball, moving on with the forward momentum. And I must say, yep. all thanks to Bobby Alexander, this man is on the wall, spot on. Look at his technique, getting that ball clean out to his players. Oh, ball him, unstoppable. To touch Tian Swanapool. Both fullbacks taking all of the kicking duties for either side. Tian Swanapool for Paul Cham, Dieter Krefford for Afis. There is George Osthuizen. Already making his presence felt, the big number eight. Look at the size of him. There at the back of the lineup with the red scrum cap, George Osthuizen for Afis. Similarly strong as Juan Wilson for Paul Jim. And Paul Jim take a fine take in the lineup. It's Reinhard Kreis. And they're trying to set the rolling ball now. It's been stopped by Afis, but illegally so. Bobby Alexander. Stefan de Toy. Moving forward now, Liam Compion. Compion slightly isolated. No Afis player there to challenge the ball. Another advantage coming to the Khamis. Out the back of the hand from Juan Wilson to Cohen Gertzta. It's Trevino Jacobs on the right wing. How did he pop up there? Stravina Jacobs is waiting right on that position, holding, waiting for that ball. Great pop release by Juan Wilson. But Stravino Jacobs stretching. Will stand a try. Scored by the young lad. Look at that pop. You can't train that. You can't teach that. Great release by John Wilson. First try. What a finish from Jacobs. It was so impressive last year for this Paul Jim first team. He's clearly hoping to make 2019 just like 2018, continue to make his name in South African rugby. This powerful left winger shifted to the right and got himself a try. This should be extremely tough. The wind will be blowing it away from the post and towards the screens. <laughs> Flat hit. But you could hear that the crowd was not satisfied with that strike as it left the boot, and Tian Swanapool is unsuccessful with his attempted posts. And here is that toss out the back of the hand from Juan Wilson. Just Jacobs, what a finish. 
This kick is up. It's not going to go the 10 meters, but it has been claimed by Reynard Kraus. He's going to have to do well to keep this in field, and he does just that. Pierre Siebert now. Bobby Alexander. The speed of the Khamis play is going to cause Afi some problems if they allow it to continue like this. They need to disrupt it, the breakdown. Wide it goes from Stefan de Toy, moving it through the hands. Turning to the boot was Ethan James and has fallen for Jacobs. Stravino Jacobs for the corner! It's another try for Paul Jim! Paul Jim on the drive to continue the six unbeaten streak they have for 2019. Only lost two last year, but this man, Stravino Jacobs, right on the ball. The ball bounced right beautifully into his hands. Look at that. Should be opened up by Ethan James. Strafino Jacobs opening those flares with the second try for Bolchem. Over it goes. Tian Swanepoel finally gets a really easy one and he pops it straight over. Look at that. It's just fallen so kindly for Strafino Jacobs. This man's an athlete. Had heavy strapping on his one of his legs last year, and it looked like it restricted his running style. He seems to be without strapping this year. I cannot wait to see what he has to offer in 2019. Deep kick from Uffie is very well taken by Reynard Kroos on the retreat. Over his shoulder. And he's managed to get the ball to ground and secure something safe for Paul Jim. Johan Small forced to rush that kick and he finds touch towards their own 10 meter line. Happy. Play on. Wonderful scenes from the schoolgirls belting out these songs here to support their first teams, respectively. Afis are now on the attack. On the outside is Marky van Rijn, it's Adolf Visser. Stay on side, stay on side. Van Asbjergen. That's Jacques Louis de Troy, who has knocked it on as he got to the line. Bobby Alexander sees an opportunity for a counter. Paul Jim are well outnumbered on the outside, though. And cutting back in widely, wisely is Kerwin Kertzner. Oh, there's trouble. Oh, no. It's a great call to stop the match because we have an Uffies player who has been left prone on the floor, and we do hope that everything is all right. We have the medics rushing onto the field now. No, he's off. He's off from Ben. He's off. He's off. See how uh, it looks like a hip shot there, Martin. Looks like he sorry, might have sorry, caught. Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. On the hip, just as he's going past. Yeah. Martin, that kind of thing can happen. Just getting the head on the wrong side of the tackle. That's, that's the angle change at the last that's, second. That's but it's so great to see that we have the medical facilities at all of our rugby games around this country that can treat youngsters like this. And here comes the first try. This is how Uffie's opened the scoring. Vili Prokhitor cutting back on the inside. Jacobs was left isolated out there trying to mark two players. He had no chance and Uffie's opened the scoring there. Advantage. Advantage Second side. try coming through from him. Ball released into space by John Wilson. Giving it to Stravina Jacobs to score that try. Trevino Jacobs, he popped up on the right, then he popped up on the left. Now, Paul Jim are just starting to get their expensive play going. Really testing up, he's on the outside with quick ruck ball as well. Stravino Jacobs picking up on that kick, which fell kindly for him, and powering his way around the corner. And he is a powerhouse, especially so for a number 11. So much to offer to Stravino Jacobs. Will be interesting to see what his future holds after this year. This is his final year at school. And of course, the landscape of rugby after school is changing on a day-by-day -day basis. On a changing on a day-by-day -day basis for young players in this country, with some of the age group levels being cut out, so important that we have things like varsity cut there to pick up the slip. Now, coming up today, the Super Rugby Sharks are taking on the Hagawaras. Hagawaras are really a mixed bag. You never know what to expect from the guys. And the Sharks, of course, are looking pretty good after taking care of the Lions. Bulls versus the Reds. One would have to feel that you're going to lean towards Bulls on that Martin. The Reds, they have shown quality and they are being well coached as well. However, it's difficult to turn your eyes away from the powerhouse in the north. And of course, all these Uffies boys and girls will know 
exactly which team to support in that match. Afi's one of the conveyor belts of Blue Bulls Rugby. They've made many, many a quality player for Blue Bulls Rugby, and of course, they have 10 Springboks as well. Most recently, Erger Sneijman, of course, a Springbok for Afis. What a player he is, just coming back from injury now. Let's hope he can make it to the World Cup. Here are the match stats, Martin. 31 tackles being made. I assume those are tackles being made by Afis because Paul Jim have really been turning up the heat. Possession only at 33%, though, so they've been very efficient. Especially so, of course, the winger, Stravino Jacobs, who has managed to run in two tries. Do indeed hope that the young man is all right. I think that I saw a five on his back as he went down, and that would be Adolf Fissel, if that's the case. I really need to check. And here, in Paul today, the proceedings have just been put on hold, and what a bunch of proceedings there are all around the school as you were driving into the first team game. All of these supporters were elsewhere, watching the young boys and girls play netball, play rugby on the various fields around here, and all the other sports that are played over these derby weekends. Things like golf, which are played on Thursdays. People play Xbox against each other on Sundays. It lasts for many a long day. It is not just a rugby match, not just this first team rugby match. The parents are down here. They're going to brise together. It is really a wonderful tradition that we have between many schools that they travel across the country to play with one another. The wild stand of Beasts and Besiering da. A scrouch, lean in, look at the legs. Legs, but it's the legs that we have to run A scrouch, now scrouch the bind. The bind, play no over to over, so we need the gap to make. Okay, how the gap? And when the third action comes, when the set action is done, we have to interlock. Okay, so it's so. So we have to set the line when the state answers. Okay, 100%. That's a perfect time for a little bit of a lesson. Delivering some teaching there to the scrums. They want to get the scrums right, of course. Nathan Barry, our ref for the day, just doing well in managing this game, making sure that the scrums will be set, the scrums will be managed well by both teams. Just got a bit cold here now, with the wind speed picking a bit up. I think the rain might be coming in, Martin, although my weather gauge has proven terrible in Cape Town year after year, always heading out into what looks like a sunny day without a jacket. One hour later, the wind starts blowing and you'll find Cape Town can get quite chilly. And it certainly is coming towards winter time now, and this is when schoolboy rugby really gets underway. This field is going to see a lot of action in the weeks to come. MJ Janser van Rensburg is the man that's now not Adolf Fisser, the number six for Uffies. You'll notice that the clock continues to tick at the bottom of your screen. That is because at schoolboy level, and when we are being broadcast on TV, we have a running clock. No matter what injury, they continue running the clock just to make sure that we stay on schedule. Martin, what do you think about these forwards standing around? Do you think that maybe with such a long injury they should be having a jog, keeping their muscles warm? Yeah, I believe just uh, putting in a stretch, especially the, uh, the front packs, put in a stretch, keep your back warm, keep those thighs warm. Because the weather has dropped, especially for these uh, Pretoria boys, the one to keep warm. But I believe with their conditioning, looking at their weights coming through, look at the way they look physically, they're well prepared, well conditioned for these conditions. Now, Martin, you played up north as well. Can you tell me, do players from Pretoria, Pumalanga, and the sorts think of themselves as fitter players than those that come from the coast because they train at altitude? I'd say fitter, yes, but we also know that when you play at al uh, altitude, your fitness gets affected differently. So you have to work a bit harder knowing that you're going to play in different weather conditions, but the same counts for the boys that play up here. They also prepare differently to go play in more on the north side. And I suppose all of the schools that play in the Cape are far more used to playing in extremely wet and rainy conditions with plenty of wind as well. And there, finally lifted off the floor, MJ Janser van Rensburg. Good luck to you, young man. What an unfortunate circumstance. Head on the wrong side of the tackle. And once more, we have a display of how important it is to have the very best of medical facilities available at all times. Good luck, MJ Janser van Rensburg. We do hope that you're all right. 
ready to get back underway with a put in to Paul Jim. The spirit here is tangible. Climb back on, let's go. Side crouch. Boy. Sit. Steady, steady, steady. Arm up, arm up, steady. Stand still. In from Bobby Alexander. Slight blind to work with, but to the open side they go, and it's Johan Smal who kicks it upfield there to receive Dieter Kreffen. Kreffen's under pressure, and he has been smoked. Piling in on Paul Jim, but they're not getting over the ball. The penalty does come their way. Is that Trevino Jacobs? He's doing it all. Holding on. Ethan James was locked and loaded on Christian de Toy. Very textbook tackle it, put in there, dropped the shoulder, ate him for breakfast. Tian Swanapu kicks for the corner. What a kick that is right into the corner on the five-meter line. This is a huge opportunity for Paul Fem, now leading by 10 points. Trevino Jacobs appears to be the first lifter of the lineup, but they send it to the back to Paul Jim trying to keep this up. The ball is called, nobody may now collapse. Paul Jim do have the watch going on, standing at the boot. It's Low Nell. Can they get this to the line? Over they go! Low Nell scores! That was one tight knit. Paul Jim rolling more than we saw there. He's very well taking the sixth ball. Look at that bind. Afi's unable to stop that rolling ball. Lonel doing very well, not losing his bind. Staying right in target and scoring that try for Bolchem. Oh, Paul Jim. Hitting them up in multiple ways now, tries on the outside, two of them to Stravino Jacobs, and then letting Uffies know that they have the capacity to drive them over with a rolling mall. Well, that'll set hearts fluttering in Uffies' team and the Uffies' management. They need to find a way back into this rugby match, scored the first try. Now they trail by 15 with the possibility of 17. Although this is a difficult kick to say the very least. Swanapool tried to start it left, and he certainly did that. Wide it remains, and it's 20 points to five. Difficult kicking conditions for this youngster. Let's take one last look at the try. Lonel controlling it well, staying behind his players. Make sure you see how he did not get himself untucked from his supporting players. Headed back into the mall, drove straight through the center, and got it down over the line. And now, they've set a rack after receiving the kickoff. Bobby Alexander. Wow, that is some well, go-forward ball from Paul Jim. They are growing into this match. Their confidence building out the back of the hand from Juan Wilson. Stravino Jacobs on the outside, taking on two. Dieter Kreffert completes the tackle. Bobby Alexander sends it back the other way. Driving forward now, though, now. And we do have great news about MJ Janssen van Rensburg. The player who was carried off the field moments ago, it is nothing more than a concussion that he has suffered. And he is apparently doing all right. So they'll be dealing with that concussion, of course, in the best way possible. Now, getting to Spiel, ground now is Spiel. Peter Gesiebert. Bobby Alexander. Retaining possession, Paul Gem. Starting to look like the dominant side in this match. As it wears on. Nia, Nia, Nia. Alexander. Back to Johan Small. He has a very interesting way of dropping the ball onto his boot. It doesn't look like the most accurate or something that is accurately repeatable, so yep. to speak. Juan Wilson competing for the ball in the air, just slightly knocking it forward. Second scrum of the match going. Well done. 
Looking pretty good right now, Juan Wilson, off the back of the hand, something he's fancying. Set up the one try with one of those, and there is the knock-on that came off his fingers. But he has had a fine match so far as Juan Wilson. Boyd! Wow. Sit! Steady, steady, arm up, arm up, arm up, steady, arm up. Arm up. Arm up. Arm up. Arm up. That's a 72 kilogram difference, if I'm not mistaken, between those two scrums. That is enormous. Mr. Mklongo will enlighten us on that shortly. An ex-prop he is. Now Afi's finally with ball in hand. Gerard Boerter tackled in the midfield. But Asbjörgen, that's off to Adolf Fissel. Extremely dangerous player is Fissel. Turnover is good for Paul Krum and Bobby Alexander sends it to the right. Now stretching away is Ethan James. James grubbers it through. Powering onto this is Kerwin Gerstel. Kerwin Gerst and Bobby Alexandra were hunting that ball down. Kerwin just tried grabbing a bit 22, more 22, 22. I to win back the ball to his advantage, just losing it. But here the ball started from Ethan James using that left foot just to pop it forward for Kerwin. Just losing that bounce, unfortunately. Deep kick. Oh, eventually very well judged by Johan Smal. He'd lost track of it for a moment there. Flat ball to Jacobs. Oh, he's not afraid to take the ball right in the faces of his opposite numbers. On this occasion, Christian Dutoy does execute the tackle. What a strong tackle that is. Sending the man backwards. Reynard Kroos on that occasion. And now in the midfield, Stefan Dutoy trying to get past an onrushing defender. But Afi's off. Really trying to catch. Paul Jim, deep back line behind the game line, and attack those that. rats for turnovers. Unsuccessful in general so far. Small. This is Otto Wilson, deeply involved, especially back out on down. the wings, handling the ball for Paul Jim, getting those offloads away. Alexander, oh, Reynard Kroos, straight to the line. It's fallen loose, and it will come back on the Yuffie side. Reynard Kraus getting the phone momentum, just losing it as Karat von Nikar was going in to support. Just slipped out of his hand. Paul, you saw that scrum, almost a whole human difference in weight pack. But like we said, you saw it was in the Master Cup. Weight doesn't have nothing you want, it's about your strategy, your technique. And the strength behind you for attack Six. is what Stay drives us more. You saw that ball with the weight deficit are still strong contenders. Van Asbjörgen. And Potgieter in the flyer position has not had much to do as yet. The late replacement in this Afi's team. That ball's flat to the line and has been nicked by Pierre Siebert. Siebert, he sends it out to Ethan James, but it's come loose from James. And after multiple knock-ons, we will head back for a scrum to Afis. Ball is intercepted by Pierre Siebert. And I say Ethan James with that grabber, always looking for opportunity. And Kerwin Kratzer just not getting to the ball. Something going wrong on the far side. <laughs> The spirit of schoolboy rugby. Six. Steady, steady, steady. Of course, it's not limited to boys. Steady, steady. The boys and girls of Afrikaanse Macy's High School as well. Of course, have linked up with Afrikaanse War School for Science. And they do have a full ticket of competition that they have when Paul Jim travels up to Trana and when the lads and ladies from Trana travel down to the Paul region. It's truly a school wide celebration. Here we have another reset of the scrum. 
Cross. Boyne. Sick. Steady, steady, what steady. What a wonderful sight. Oh, Paul Jim now trying to make their presence felt at scrum time. You can, of course, only drive five meters the schoolboy level. So if you want to get a tight head, you have to get it quick. Forced into changing plans was Dieter Crawford, and he's done very well using the wind to his advantage. Tian Swanapool. Swanapool took it to the line, employed his footwork, stayed on his feet for a while, and has set the ruck in a good spot. Fighting for it on the ground is Reynard Kroos. As Afi's tried to nick the ball, and Pirach Siebert trying to work it to the outside. Here's Bobby Alexander. In the middle is Kroos. Get away now, leave it, Becker. Leave it. Tireless touchline to touchline rugby that Paul Chum is subjecting the Afi's defense to, but they keep rushing up on the outside and shutting down the outside options for Chum. Alexander, inside ball to Johan Smal. Matthew van Rijn, captain of Chum, he's taking it in on that occasion. Stier van der Toy dropping his shoulder. Bobby Alexander, and that's out to Smal. Smal looking for the touchline. Did that bounce in field? Yes, it did. And Afis will continue to be pressurized in their own 22-meter line, dominating territory and possession the home side this afternoon. Balkham with ball in hand, looking very dangerous. You'd say they're playing touch rugby on a Sunday. These boys are so calm and collected, using every opportunity they have. The challenge at the front of the line out is successful. And Small gets it out to Liam Compion. Unfortunately, cannot hold on to the ball. And while there was some drizzle this morning, it has not started raining in the proverbial way, which it tends to down in the Cape. So we can be thankful for that so far. But the field conditions are relatively dry. But of course, that does not bode well for Liam Compion on that occasion because he's dropped the ball cold. Bad luck, young man. Coming from the field is Portgieter, or Vully Portgieter for Afis. Kraus. Sick. It's another steady, substitution steady. in the first half for Afis. They had two changes to the starting lineup heading into this match as well, and now they have two of the players that started off the field. Extremely disruptive for these youngsters. Another fine hit in the midfield. This time it's Ethan James. Men over the ball, but they're off, off their feet. Off feet. And Nathan Berry gives a penalty to the lads from Chwane. They have a chance to use this win to their advantage and move themselves upfield. They may find themselves having to do just as much running as Paul Jim are doing in this first half when the wind is blowing in their faces as well. Ethan James, part of that tackle, is contesting off his feet. As well as... Uh, John Wilson. It looked like he a pretty skill. good effort at a turnover from Nathan James. But now, wide ball, and he was in space, was Christian Detroit. Desperately looking for space on Afis, what a chance that was. It was Johan Detroit passing it out to Christian Detroit. Right to the back, wonderful take that is. And now cutting back in, Juan Wilson. Tackle! Brought down in the midfield. Afi's not committing to that ruck. They've got their defenses spread. They've seen exactly how much Paul Jim are running this ball. And they want to make sure they have defenders in all positions to meet those attacking players. Knock on in the midfield on this occasion. And Afi's will have a scrum dead center. Less than 10 minutes to play in the first half. Handling errors on Paul Hem on seven, just raking up. I think they just need to take some time to cool it a bit off, get the passes right, get the passes close between scrum off, Bobby Alexander, and the forward pack. Side crouch. Boind. Sit. Steady, steady, steady. Had some problems at the last scrum. This time it is wheeling slightly. Afi's beginning to move forward. And it's George Oosthuizen who picks up at the back. Dieter Krafford puts it to boot. Stravino Jacobs is not happy. Oh, 
Sharina was looking to get some distance on that ball, just not as lucky, nicking it on the side of his boot. Great line up this time from Afis, and they will be very happy with that. The ball is called, and at the back of Jacques Louis de Toy, the captain of this team. Advantage to Afis as Paul Jumbo collapsing, and de Toy is Number isolated seven. at the back of the mall. But Asviachen has the chance to free the ball, and this one goes to Johan de Toy. Toy caught up on the 22. It's number seven sacking them all. Seven. Clear call from referee Bay. Number seven sacking. Surely going for touch. Yes. The wind blowing in exactly this direction that the ball will now head. That is the way that the wind is blowing. And it is behind Afis. Palchem will have this wind behind them in the second half. It's a good chance they'll put it to use. The wind has picked up once more to the back of the line on even in these Sacked blustery it. conditions and George Boris Hazen takes he's set at the back and it must be freed by Detroit Jacques Louis Detroit FC Pochiter takes it to the line shut down a wonderful Lost tackle that Lost was from Stefan Detroit for Paul Fran. has it been turned over now it's coming back on his side pure chaos Bobby Alexander shot to that dives on the ball and does he win it back for his team Still diving all over it, everybody spread out by Ruben Windel for Afis. Intercepted by Kerwin Gertzter. And that extended yeah. moment of madness comes Maybe to an end with a scrum to Afis. Yeah, and a massive opportunity to draw the scores slightly closer as we approach the halftime mark. 35 minutes a half from Schoolboy Rugby, of course. Portrita received that ball, saw the space, tried stepping in. I think he might have injured his knee there. With him sitting down. Oh, Martin, they're dropping like flies out there, these Uppies boys. I mentioned before that they made the late changes to their starting lineup. There is FC Potchita. By the way, he was the reserve flyoff to start this match. He was not scheduled to be on the field. That was to Blanche Van Lul, who was going to be starting for Uppies. FC Portrito off the bench. Yeah. As the medical assistant from Afis. Take rugby very seriously out there. Looks like he may have been previously a front ranker, that man. So built strong up there in Toronto. Boing! We love our protein. Sit! Steady on, up, on, up, up. Referee Perry getting in there, making sure that his instructions are well understood by the two packs. Breaking from the back is George Orsazen. That has gone horribly wrong, and Johan de Toy has to reach up. Fly on, fly on. Van Asbjörgen, he sends it right. That's a great dummy from Van Asbjörgen. Oh, the pass off the back of the hand. Gustav Bester scores. Michael Van Asbjörgen with a classic toast and toast, releasing the ball. Gustav Bester. The substitute coming on to score his try. Look at this young man. Toast, toast. Back of the hand released to Gustav Bester scoring that try for Afis. Just have to love that about schoolboy rugby. This one, it looks like nothing is on. They get the pass out the back of the hand and keep the movement alive. And Afis have scored again. It's 20 points to 10, possibly. This could be taken to an eight-point game by Dieter Kraffert. <laughs> Wonderful kick that is from Dieter Kraffert. Although he was very close to the post, negotiating the wind well. Looks like he has an extremely clean strike on him. He will be unhappy that he didn't get to place kick the previous one, had the drop kick. Here's Van Asbjörgen's dummy, absolutely drew in Reinhard Kroos, and now out the back of the hand. That is a fine, fine try for Gustav Bester. By the way, Gustav Bester was not meant to be playing in this match either. He was brought onto the bench as one of the late replacements. Reinhard Ludwig went to the starting lineup in the fourth jersey. Tion Swanepoel, this one looks like it's long. 
And it is long. We're going back to the center spot of the field. This game continues to ebb and flow. Afis looked like they were being dominated with ball in hand. All of a sudden, Khami started making handling errors. They've now made seven of them. And then a little mistake like that from Tian Swanepoel. And all of a sudden, the Trane boys are coming back into this thing. Back indeed. And we see that substitute in Gustav Bester having great effect with their scrums. Now solidly moving forward and then winning their scrums. Both him just need to brush up on that. Going. Hold on. Sit. Steady. 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 All well, the school stongs are belted out from the stands. Uppies have another solid scrum and George Oersthaisen picks from the base. Dieter Krafford turns to the boot again. Stravino Jacobs, that has been kicked through by Krafford, who wants this. Tian Swanepoel is back there and he's knocked the ball on. Oh, it's all on here. Here he comes, Krafford! There's no TMOs out here, folks. It's up to Nathan Barry. Dieter Krafford has he jotted this ball down. I like that. I like that. Yes, thank you. Thank you. I must say what I can see. The number nine is on the back of the club. In goal, and the best player on the ground. In goal. Yeah. Of what did he make? Club. But in the end goal, what for long for him to win? But he's still on the back of the bus. No try. Whoa, goodness me, Dieter Krafford. Let's check it out. Here's the knock on from Tian Swanepoel. That's off the boot of Dieter Krafford. Everybody's on sides at this point. That's Bobby Alexander knocking the ball backwards. And here comes Dieter Krafford with the dot. Here it comes. Knock on. 100% right, Mr. Berry. He saw it live. We've seen a replay. I still thought he was wrong. He's proven me wrong. Well done, Mr. Nathan Berry. Great call. Yeah, I lost that ball. That's where the came, knock came through. Steady, 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 steady. Nathan Berry, they set the scrum on Van Asbjergen at the back. Van Asbjergen sends it left. Going to the line! It's FC Potgieter! FC Potgieter sent that home boy shopping. Look at these scenes, the Uffies fans, they are jumping up and down. They're going to be having to travel back to Gauteng soon. But before they do that, it's time to sing. Uffies on their sixth game winning streak. They lost four games last year, one of them being this one. But today, they say no, no, no. FC Potgieter sent two players shopping, no one in front of him, scoring that try for Uffies. Magical stuff. What a half this has turned out to be. It really has swung either way. And Afi is showing what they've got now. They might have to run the ball a lot more in the second half. The wind could be in their face, but that's all coming next. Dieter Krafford right now has a chance to make this a one point game. Krafford. Oh, he's got it, it's good. Number 15, number 15. This kid has got the goods when it comes to the kicking tee, and Dieter Kravitz nails the kick. Martin, what a first half we've had here. It's been an exciting first half, and I must say, Afis not letting down, not letting back, coming back. Opsi, Potgieter, send those two to Stark Enico to watch their movie with a try for Afis. Oh, it's pure joy covering schoolboy rugby, and the season has begun again. Welcome to the Super Squick Premier Interschool Series. Three tries to three in the first half. Paul Jim lead by one point. It's 2019. Twenty points to nineteen. Paul Jim lead Uffies. Three tries apiece, and who would have guessed it after the way that this match started? It was a fascinating start. Paul Jim were the first to concede, though, and here's how it happened. Power play on the blind side here for Asbjergen, noticing that there was a blind side to work with. There you see him look at it, and away it goes to Buddy Prokhitar. Lines up Stravino Jacobs, who had two to mark. He had no chance. Over goes the big man. Leave it. You're off. Second try coming through from both them. New advantage for side. With John Wilson releasing Stravino Jacob scoring his opening try for both them. What a powerhouse he is on the wing, and if you want evidence of that, watch what's coming up next. 
Juan Wilson involved again. That kick coming from Ethan James. It falls to Stravina Jacobs. Never look back. Never surrender. Over the line he goes. The big boy from Paul. The super quick Stravino Jacobs with a second try of the match. Happy. With another try coming through for Paul Hill. Rolling more created. Solid. Solid bond we have there. Forward momentum. Luanel with ball in hand. Just kept his bond very close, dotting it down. Bolton. Wonderful technique on that rolling ball. It looked like Paljan might be running away with that match at this point. Afis were having none of it. But Asbjergen, the pass out the back of the hand to Gustav Bester. Well, Michael von Asbjergen has been quite a stalwart in this game. With FC Pochita, with some cinematic play, scoring that try for Afis. Nathan Berry blows the whistle, we're ready to get back underway. That kick is flat because it is going straight into a considerable win. Stravino Jacobs past one, past two. And the inside ball is falling loose, advantage to Uppies. Very disappointing start for the home team. But Martin, this, this win, it's getting stronger, isn't it? And we can testify to that because it's blowing into our faces, so to speak. Now the wind picking up with a bit of cold. So now it will change to a bit of strategic play that we have to see from the scrum half and the fly halves. Kicks must be more strategical. And use very well. Sit. Steady, 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 steady. Panas Viechen feeds. And once more, the reliable George Gorsay's in there to protect to the left wing. Oh, the boss. Pass has been called forward to Kyle Liebenberg. Very much struggling to get the balls to the wings. Uppies as compared to Paul Jim, who have been able to do that with relative ease. Uppies playing a tighter game. Also, they've been starved the possession. The scrum has looked solid though, Martin. They've really been testing the scrummies. Yeah, Uppies. The Paul Jim boys there, Martin. Arm in arm. And do you remember the days of being a schoolboy or those too far behind you? That was about uh, 25 years ago. Huh? I'll take your word for it, Martin. Now we have another substitution coming on. Afis continue to have to roll the changes. That is another change at fly half. That's FC Potkita try scorer in the first half coming on. And now coming on is Nico Miller, who was not part of the match 23 when this day began. Crouch. Boing. I think that changer was uh, well, complimented by FC Portland's uh, knee injury. Probably going to be able to sustain it in the game. Yeah. Yeah. Heavy, heavy, strapping. heavy strapping for Portrita on that knee and off the field he goes. It'll be interesting to see how bad these injuries are and whether to Blanche van Loo will be available again for Afi soon. Side cross. Yeah, yeah. Boyd. Sit. Steady. Oh. Both of these teams will be chasing the mantle of number one school team in the country this year, especially so Paul Jim, if reports are to be believed. Fine running from Stefan de Toy. Of course, big boots to fill in David Kellerman, who was so impressive last year, so impactful for this Paul Jim side. Look at the leg drive, taking them towards the 10-meter line of Marty, of Afis. Pardon me. Bobby Alexander, he sent it out to Small. Bobby Alexander again, now Paul Jim back in control of the ball. They enjoyed plenty of it in the first half. Compion was the carrier on that occasion. Big hit, sending back Reynard Kroos. Oh, the step on the inside from Ethan James. He's got them guessing, but the Uffies defense is well spread. Look how many, look how few players they commit to this ruck. Just the tackler who was making that tackle is committed because they know that Paul Jim will spread it wide and they need to have tacklers there. Dieter Krafford is there to cover. Penalty coming the way of Paul Jim. We look to have an injury here to Juan Wilson. He's down for the Hummies. Juan Wilson was looking to drive out Gustav Bester. I think might be a knock to the head. Plenty of work for our medical staff today. 
started off with all of the Eppies boys going down. Maybe three times for Eppies. Bottom leaves off. Okay. Okay, Joan Wilson up on his feet, walking off. Maybe took a bit of a head knock. He's a shot in the cup. He's a shot in the cup, so he can off. And surely he will be getting a head injury assessment. There's another injury for Paul Jim on the field. What is going on out here? This is a bruising encounter. Johan Smal, the number 10 for Paul Jim, is currently receiving some attention to his hip on the left hand side of your screen. Side. Changing the bottom side with Eric Basson and on the number 20 jersey coming in from John Wilson. But what talent Bochum has in these wings, wingers. And the, the back three, the centers, and Stravino Jacobs, oh. Ethan James playing a great combination. Yes, Ethan James being full of stepping, however, the Afi's players are well spread and it's very difficult for him to find the break in the line. Just waiting for a ball right now is Liam Compia. Doesn't look to be the happiest man on earth either. All right, and now Paul Jim with one point of the lead inside the 22 of Afi's. Military lines down to mark him on our lines down for Fakai. Simple message from Nathan Berry. Try to keep that gap open. Strong wind blowing here, a lot of pressure on this line out from Compia. Front ball is the good call. They take it at the front, and now they set a rolling ball to the front. This paid dividends in the first half. They got themselves one try. This time, Athens are sending them sideways. Stefan de Choi stepping into defenders, staying on his feet. No tackle. Tackle now called. He must be released. He must be released. He must be released, and he is eventually. Bobby Alexander, look how many defenders for Athens there are. This is going to be difficult. Pierre Sibert, Bobby Alexander. That is small again, working the smallest of spaces on the outside through Stravino. Jacobs! And Jacobs is taking them within a meter. And here comes him now. Part of forwards, driving for the line. Clearly called to leave the ball. George Ua stays in head. One more dip, charging in is Pirach Siebert. Bobby Alexander, small, spreading it to the toy. Wide they go, the space on the outside for Basson. Our replacement, Eric Basson, or rather the bottom re replacement, standing on the wing, right in position, waiting for the ball with a one man overlap. He gets the ball from Johan Small, scoring quite the try for Bochum. Now, Basson just came onto the field for Juan Olsen, who was so impressive in the eight jersey for Hummies. Small ball to the outside. Interesting how. Athis committed so many players going towards that right hand side but to be fair they were being taken right to the line and after they've had such a spread defense they're found wanting on the wing 25 19 before the kick this would be a very good kick he can use the win to his advantage to swing it back in if he hits it towards the left post Swanepoel does start it outside the left hand post. Is this going to swing back enough? Oh! Wonderful effort that is. Now, Tian Swanepoel. The technique was right, just got it slightly wrong. Up it goes into the 22 meter line. Has been stripped away in the tackle, and what a chance this is for Athens. Spread wide by Nico Muller. And now it's your hand to very little to do in this match so far, you hand it toy. Adolf Fusser! Adolf Fusser! Adolf Fusser is putting men on his back. And he does present well. Afis with a huge opportunity here. Ruben Window with the hands. And Van Asbjergen. Not too keen to get it too far away from the first man. That is irresponsible from Gustav Bester. Try scorer for Afis today. Really threw a speculator with the left hand on his way to ground under pressure from two gym players. That is not in the coaching test. Underneath this ball is Karl Liebenberg. Liebenberg weighing up his options. He sees gaps in the center field or does he? Those have all been shut down. 
and he's inside the 22 meter line in general. Bobby Alexander and ceremoniously tossed away from that rack. Oh, big contact close to the breakdown. Jacques Louis Detroit, captain of Afis, is taken down. Ruben Wendell. Lost the foot play, lost the Look at Adolf Fischer, the size footer. of the man who made that wonderful charge for Afis moments ago. Every chance of being at Craven Week this year is Adolf Fischer. He was at Academy Week last year. Afis continues playing 10 man rugby. Afanas Birchen is through again. Looking for options. The pop off the ground is great, and that's a way to Kelbrook over the top to the coast on the outside. Peter Crawford. I still must say this, man. Michael van Asbechen channeling through those gaps. Peter Crawford just throwing it a bit too high out of Adolfus's reach. But quite the build up by Afis. We have more medical staff on the field. Oh, right man. Now. Okay, now everything seems to be fine, and right now there is a massive pressure line out for Paul Jim. Don't think this is locked in because the wind is blowing, and Afis will contest. Committed to the two ball. This one's over the top. Van Asbjergen. Looks like a knock. Knock is what it is. George Orsayzen, I believe. Number eight for Afis. They have not put him to his best use at all. He looks like a real powerhouse of a player, not doing any ball carrying so far. George Orsayzen. Quite the unit. I wasn't expecting that ball to come his way. Right now. now is the perfect opportunity for Afis to show that weight advantage. Bind a bit lower, bind a bit tighter. Right in scoring position. Bind. Still making noise. Those who are wearing the colors of Paul Jim, which happen to be the exact same colors as Afis. Bobby Alexander, Tian Swanepoel. He's shown flashes of excellence so far, especially with his place kicking. Had one chance to run the ball from the back, looks like he tempted it. Six points stand between the two sides in this massive inter-schools match. Super quick Premier Inter-Schools is back in your World of Champions. There's the gentleman in question. The kicking duties for Paul Jim today. That has evaded the first jumper for Afis that they can count themselves lucky to hold on to this possession. Over the top of the head from Van Asbjergen, very disjointed from Martis and piling into that rack. Pardon me, keep calling them Martis for some strange reason. Afis now. Tackle the game, that is Ruben Windle. He has been busy in the number one jersey for Afis. And Jacques Louis de Toy on the carry, the captain. He certainly was courageous on that occasion. Working back to the blind, Windle appears to be. Full of running as a number one. Very mobile prop is Ruben Wendell, keeping it close to the rack. 90% 10 man rugby from Afis, but this time they do try to spread the ball. No, they don't. Nico Miller. Marshalling in a 10 position, and the knock on does come. Well, Martin, are they being forced into running the ball more than they might like because the wind is now blowing in their face? Does that not give them the opportunity to kick the way they did in the first half? I think, but. Also, because they're playing against the wind, trying to retain it as much as they can, play the forward packs, pounce it forward, pounce it forward, and then release it to the back line. Just haven't been doing it well, or not executing too clinically, with that handling errors coming through. You see, in the battle of possession and territory, things are balancing out quite significantly. The more that Uffies play in this half, the more those stats will come together, because Paul Jim ran it throughout the first half. Bind. Sick! Steady, 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 steady. You'll see that the handling errors are also coming into balance. Paul Jim right, were right. very much leading that in the first half. Afi is now being forced to run the ball. And you saw that ball hold up in the wind, that he had to go back and get it to Stefan Detroit. Right, I'm right, the wind right, is right, blowing right. in the backs of these Paul Jim players. Bobby Alexander waiting for the ball to present itself. And Paul Jim fans not happy with some player playing the ball off his feet. Great run from Reynard Kroos. Very impressive today, the lock forward. Trying for a grubber through Ethan James. Wow. There's a serious reaction from the Afis pupils. And 
and the counter reaction from the Khamis pupils. Rapfong. And in the end, we will have a penalty. Two Khamis, Tian Swanapur will really have to work this one into touch. Shouldn't be too much distance on it. What a kick that is! Considering the way the wind is blowing, Tian Swanapool has managed to get plenty of distance for his Paul Jim teammates. Offside play there, I believe. Raymond Cross tackled by an offside player. Listen to this noise! Up they go with fine deception and it's taken by Marco van Rijn, captain of Chamis. They now set the rolling mall with serious intent. Are you man, Spiel? Are you man? The own man brought it down. And it's off from Bobby Alexander to Stefan Detroy. Detroy to the line, worming his way through the tackles. Five meters out of Paul Cham. Oh, this one is out to Ethan James. Ethan James almost working his way through the gap. Running at the spaces and not the faces. Bobby Alexander, that's the small. Here, this is the Pirach Siebert. Desperation from up. He's trying to get the hands on the ball. Bobby Alexander. Campion! Campion for the line! Liam Campion just showing his strength. Holding on to that ball. Marching through over the try line. Finally scoring the try. Excuse me, sit down. With a handoff coming from Pierre Siebert. Campion driving through, supported by John Small. Scoring the try for Bolchem. Campion. The display of power staying on his feet through the tackle of his opposite number, captain of Afi's Jacques Louis de Toy. Yeah, Campion is over. Small with his first kick of the match, and he nails it, using the wind beautifully to his advantage. Johan Small slots the kick. Are we having a look at a possible infringement? Oh, that's come loose from the hand. No control, short of the line. Many things wrong with that. Many things wrong. And that's schoolboy rugby for you. Oh, I quite enjoy it when there's no TMO, really. It takes you back to the heart of the game. The referee can watch it and call it as he sees it. And of course, sometimes the calls are wrong. Now, Johan Small. And in position is George Orsthausen. He does not run the ball again. But Asbjörn, poor passes each one of these. And Dieter Kraffert is the one that has to take the responsibility of running into the advancing Paul Jim defenders. Asbjörn over the top. Has been touched. What a brilliant take from Ethan James. Can he retain his body shape and put the ball back for Paul Jim here? Yes, he can. Alexander de Pirach Siebert. He's regaining confidence in his ball running as the match wears on. Over the top is from Small, straight into the arms of Christian Dutroy. And the crowd will tell you what's going on there. Christian Dutroy was just looking for the chippy over the backs of Botham, just nicking it out. Liam Campion to feed the line up. Just scored a try, which I'm going to try. That's swinging Happy. in from the outside. Happy, yes. In these kind of conditions, you have to accept some of those kind of things. Carrying it to the line again. Stefan de Toy. Pirach Siebert hanging out the palm. But he's thrown a loose pass and it has been hacked through. And now on the outside, it's Karl Liebenberg for Avis. And he is over Cohen Hansdorf for Paul Jim. And he has forced the turnover. Had the slight figure of Karl Liebenberg. Presenting Uffies with a big chance to strike back in this match. It's Werner Kreer. And if you recognize that name, there's a man that played a couple of matches for the Blue Bulls who goes by the name of Werner Kreer. Also happens to be a prop. Oh, over the top come Kham. Counter is good speed. Look at that counter rocking from the home side. Now Uffies come flooding back in. Has it come back on the side of the footballer? Yes, it has, and it's their captain, Jacques-Louis de Toy. Who's not having any of that, but he's knocked it on. 
13 points between the teams. It's time for Avis to score right now if they want a chance at winning this match. They cannot afford to keep having these Benke handling Benke errors. Time, off, oh, there's that counter wrap. Oh, you got to love that. Piling in over the top. And then Afis came fighting back at them. 17. That was stolen from Bobby Alexander on the floor. Michael Asbehan was just caught sleeping there. Great stealing attempt made by Bolton. Leaving Bobby Alexander also out in the open with no support. Allowing Afis to steal back. Let's go. Well, the substitutions have certainly played their part, especially so for Afis today. That's Bjorn van Vleek on the touch lines warming up. Just to remind you one more time, Afis had two changes to the starting lineup just before the match. Two people came onto the bench. Since then, FC Port Peter, the reserve, a flyoff has gone off as well. Now, Paul Hlum making a change of their own. Is he getting back on? No, just encouraging. Just encouraging his friend there was Marku van Rijn, captain of Paul Hlum. Is Marku van Rijn going off the field? And Johan van Rijn is coming on. Van Rijn for van Rijn, so one can tell why they were encouraging each other. Don't finish my job, bro. That's the captain of Belgium. Boing! Sick! The attrition rate in this match has been significant. Both teams really feeling it in this early season clash between two powerhouses of the South African game. Onto the boot from Ethan James. What's the tactic right now, Martin? Are Paul Jim just trying to see this out? Are they allowing the to expend all their energy in attacking and rather just kicking the ball, using the win to their advantage? I think so. I think yeah. Paul Jim are all in striking range. I think they're going to start running the ball quite a bit. They have the striking force in the back. With James just unlocking those talents. What a take that is at the front of the line out by the highly impressive Adolf Fissel. Has to be the standout player from this Afi side so far today. Here's the big man, George Oesthuizen. Van Asbjergen weighing up his options left and right. That is a good run. Gustav Vester eventually brought it down. Van Asbjergen, Wendel. In to clear Werner Kreer and co. Adolf Fisser looking for a gap, but Dirich Siebert, equally impressive flanker for Paul Jump, taking him down. Oh, what a tackle that is on right up Mubach in the midfield. But Asbjergen. The retention of possession has been impressive, but eventually the knock-on does come as the Paul Jim defense continues to hold strong like a wall. Afi's not making any pressure, any penetration, not making the defense sag off, not putting in kicks behind, no grubbers. They are running straight into the faces of their Paul counterparts. Paul have seen how Afi's makes use of uh, Jacques Louis de Toit. <laughs> they had a good luck on him with a triple effect tackle on him. And I could see his eyes was just off that ball, knocking it in as he was getting it. Well, Captain Marku van Rijn just told his brother, listen, that's enough. Side cross. Take over from you. Boing. Sick. Steady, steady, steady. So Marku van Rijn back onto the field for Paul Jim. Bobby Alexander feeding a scrum dead center in the field just beyond the halfway line. And they break blind with Bobby Alexander. Tian Swanepoel beats the first, almost around the second. But he is dragged off the footer, to ground. Off the footer. Alexander. Options for Paul Jim on that occasion. Lost it's Pedro van Mikael, the one who takes it in. Alexander, Smal. Smal sends it wide, and that's the Dutoy. Jacobs cutting in. Always beats a couple of defenders any time he touches the ball. Haven't seen much of him in this half. Advantage to Jim. You find Becker carrying it on this occasion. Jacques-Louis de Toy for Afis is an uncompromising defender. And here they have some space on the outside. See from de Toy. He does get it away to Hamster. Hamster pops it back onto the inside. It's de Toy! De Toy! Stefan de Toy with his first try of this match. What a combination. What synergy in that back line. Look at that reach. Got the ball Dunking. into his hands. Rolled right onto that try line with the try for Stefan de Toy. 
That's the fine dummy. This pass didn't look like it would stick. Oh, but boy, did it stick. And diving over the line is Stefan de Toy. And Paul Kham extend their lead. They'll be very happy in what has been a difficult match for them. They do look like they are the better side between these two. Here's Mark. Another fantastic swinger. He's had two relatively easy kicks as compared to Tian Swanepoel's efforts that had to deal with all sorts of difficult wind. But there's your try scorer. Well, Kern Herzer had two options on his right, on his left, but rather passed it to Stefan de Toit, coming in like a Boeing with a gust of wind behind it, scoring that try for him. And now the offload. Staying on his feet extremely well. Wonderful leg drive from Lono. Just one of the try scorers from Paul Sun today. We've been blessed with a couple of them. Small with the kick up field. Not a very convincing kicker out of hand. But he does get good distance on that using the wind to his advantage. If he's set the ruck right in the middle of the Jan Creel field. Here's their captain, Jacques Louis de Toy. Leg drive from Detroit, they need quick ruck ball. And now the Paul Jim defenders are rushing up, the sweeping defenders of Paul Jim that were back for the kick. They can see that Uppies are not going to kick, so they rush up into the line, giving Uppies no chance of being able to break the defensive line as they are outnumbered time after time. They need to start mixing up their game in spite of the fact that the wind is blowing into their faces. We've been waiting for this young man, George Wester, is it? To have a run with the ball. Contesting on the ground, penalty conceded. The ball hit. Let go out. Tian Swanepoel looking for excessive distance, and that is a huge mistake at the end of the day. It is going right back to where the kick was taken from. Here is where the penalty occurred. Yes, playing the ball on the ground. George Ostays and after he lost control, pure frustration. That is where we will head back to as the ball did not go out into touch from that penalty kick. Big turnaround of events here. The sea of green and yellow and red, or rather maroon. The pride of these two schools. You see on the strike of Afis. The red, the gold and the green. And then Paul John, the maroon, the gold. And the green as well. To the line is Nico Muller. Wrapped up convincingly by Paul Jim as he got his knees to ground. It is a tackle now. Ball is available. Just about available. Van Asbjergen. That is through the hands of Johan de Toy to the outside. It's Bjorn van Veik. Running out of ideas are Afis now with less than 10 minutes to play, less than 9 minutes to play. Marco! Bjorn van Veik. Just tackled out there. Great defense attempt by Paulson. Yet another fallen soldier for Afis. It really has been a tough day for their first team. And I mean, if any of these are serious injuries, it's going to start having a long term effect on their season. If there's one thing that's for certain, the paramedics have been hard at work today. It is the number 12, Johan de Toy. He has been dynamic, but Afis have not really managed to work the ball through the hands of their back line. They seem to spend more of their time setting up individual runners, hoping that the power will carry them through. And thus far, it has not worked perfectly. I'm not sure if this is part of an HIA. It is, it's a rather casual. Time is back on. To put it into the lineup, Liam Kompion. That is just beyond the two ball, working it very well. Up for it was Marku van Rijn, captain of Paul Jumps. Advantage because Afis are in from the side, particularly Ruben Windle, who is now called out for the rolling mall, continues. Afis will have to reform and defend this. Chavino Jacobs straight at the line. 
Jacobs places it back. Bobby Alexander Marcus. around the corner. Gerard van Nieker. Bobby Alexander right again. Right Quick ruck ball for Chummies. They clearly have some intent here. They want to work this outside. And running is Ethan James. That goal! That goal! That goal! Play on, play on, on, on. Managing to get the ball free and put it back. Ethan James. Pierach Siebert! Blood force trauma is what he brings. Small. Campion. Bobby Stop Alexander. Small. Campion again. The pace of Khami's play increasing with each movement and an advantage was still being played. What a tackle that was from Bobby Alexander, by the way. Sending back Jacques Louis de Toy after the whistle. Still got to take that one and put it in the locker as a scrum off. Bobby Alexander making it look like a from David versus Goliath. Hooking tackle on and the penalties have started flowing in the way of Paul Chum. You can see the shoulders dropping on these Uppies players. Six penalties conceded to two. That tells a tale which is not a very favorable one. Now look, Tian Swanafu is kicking across the field because the wind is blowing from his back in the direction which he will be kicking. The wind is blowing and it will carry the ball into touch. Unlike with the kick that he took previously where it pushed it away. Uppies boys, given a warning, not paddling back enough. Constantly offside. Last warning came in through from our ref, Nathan Barry. Can't be undefeated. What a ball that is in windy conditions. That is a bullet. And now Paul Jim have the chance to set a rolling ball. Uffie's swimming around the side. Everything's still fine. This is chaos. No advantage now comes. Who's in possession of this ball? Bobby Alexander is. Straight to the line, Pierre Siebert. Siebert thought he saw something. He is nailed backwards by Johan de Toy and friends. Alexander, quick rat ball. And it's Jovan Becker. Up in for Alexander. Trouble now. Van Niekerk. Found some gaps. Alexander again. The speed of ball is fantastic. And Stravino Jacobs misses out on a hit. I think Ruben Wundel from Muffy is about to get his ticket. Spin offside. Coming onto the rolling walls from the side as well. It was a vantage, there for a penalty for him. Two keer on kant geweest, and here weer van die kant af weer geel kaart. Thank you. You said it, Martin, and he deserved it. Ruben Wendel. He's been amazing today, by the way. He's, this is extremely athletic prop. He's been running all day, he's shown hands, he's shown power, and he's been scrumming extremely well as well. Bright future ahead of this youngster. Inside ball. This is when Jacobs just couldn't hold on. The try line was not beckoning. He check, was time over check. the try line as he was knocking the ball on, and it'll be an element of frustration there for the youngster. And we have yet another casualty here in this match. Another player down, and it's Small, the number 10 for Paul Jim. Feet and off. He's been looking very good with ball in hand, an expensive running fly off. He's got a touch of Chris Rousseau about him. Oh, and by the way, the coach of this team right now. Peter Rousseau, the beloved Slap Chips. He's the coach of Paul Jim this year. He's been involved for a while. He had some commitments in Japan last year. He couldn't be there the whole year. Ooh, that looks dangerous. That looks like a bad injury. Number one side wow. injury, number one. So many players getting some niggles here today. Tian Swanapool pops it into the corner, and Paul Jim have another chance to advance on the Yuppies line. We have less than four minutes to play. Yum, champion. Has been throwing in some good ball oh. in the midst of the strong winds blowing through. Martin, I reckon the, the Compions family's favorite karaoke song. Stand up for the Compions. <laughs> and it comes from Compion. They set the rackets. Marku van Rijn, the captain, who takes it in the center. Can they get this rolling ball working again in the second half? He's a dragon and sideways, they'll have to corkscrew, they'll have to spin. He has to break now, Leon Compion. He has to break. A slight obstruction by one of his players, but it is back here for Bobby Alexander. Away they come, Siebert! Siebert! Siebert has been putting in the effort. What a unit, has the size on him, took it upon himself to score his try. Nobody's worked harder today than this chap right here. The number seven for Paul Jim, Peter Siebert. And the kick has already taken place. It 
has gone over the post, one can only assume. Bobby Alexander off the field of Siebert, just reaching out for the line. The defensive numbers finally wearing out, and Uffies have been dominated in the second half. Stravino Jacobs underneath that. A fearless winger this man is. Oh, Every chance at a forward that. is coming for that ball to smoke you off it. He didn't take his eye off the ball for one second. Caught the ball and then looked at his defenders. Here Park Hem working it out to the right-hand side. It's Stefan Detroit. Continues working hard on the Detroit jersey. Marku van Rijn. Bobby Alexander. Gerard van Mieker. Good strong run. Bobby Alexander. Numbers to the blind. But are they bunched? They'll have to work. They'll have to run straight. Oh! Oh! oh Ethan James finishes his man off. Stepped him in a phone booth. That was beautiful. Oh, the hands are fantastic off the ground from Reynard Kraus. Funny can't dump here. I'm a six side. Oh, Kraus looks to be cramping up just as that happened to him. Let's go, Stan. Stan, let's go. And now he's getting his hamstring stretched out just off your screen. Dieter Krafford. Technically excellent for Afis in the 15 jersey today. He has looked very good in everything that he has done, especially so in his set plays and his goal kicking. Is that another? That is another. Afis player is down right here in front of us. Oh my goodness, this thing has been played with intensity. Players down all over the field for Afis. You have the toy. Jacques Louis de Toy. Captain will not be happy with the way this match has slipped away from them. To the back of the line, out a fine take. Can they set the rolling ball? No, the sack is good, and that will be gut wrenching. They have to break. It's Van Asbjergen. Van Asbjergen's isolated here. Siebert's over the ball. But he has been absolutely crushed by the oncoming Uppies. Forward pick. Colbert. On that occasion, with the pick and go, Afi's keeping it tight to the rack. Quick ball for Van Asbjergen. He's dummied one too many times today. People aren't going to continue buying that. Set up a try with the one. Made a fine break with another dummy and go. Gustav Bester in the 19 jersey. His try seems a long time ago now for Afi's. Now trail by 27 points after being right in this game. Van Asbjergen. That is Gustav Bester. Bester! Bester! For the line, he's out. His foot is in touch. With 70 minutes up. That is that for Premier Inter Schools. Super quick Premier Inter Schools match number two of 2019. This Paul Gem side looks the real deal. What a fascinating fixture we have had here today, Martin. Quite the game. I must say, Paul Gem ran away with that scoreboard in the second half. Great efforts put in by. Pierre Siebert, Ethan James, Stravina Jacobs. Quite the day. Quite the day indeed, and Afi certainly brought the heat, especially in the first half. Many standout players for them, but at the end of the day, the scoreline tells the tale. Seven tries to three. Paul Chum win 46-19.